Okay, so first you're gonna create a new project, make sure it's a 2D project, and I'm dragging in some sprites here into my scene that are ready made. If you wanna make sure the sprites are the same size as mine so you can follow along exactly, then set the bird to be at position 00, zero and 0.5 scale, and set the pipe there to four on the X and Y axis. We're gonna copy that, we're gonna make another one that's gonna be upside down like so, and we're gonna rename this one pipe down. We're gonna add a rigid body to the bird, so select that and then the inspector, select add component, and then we're gonna add the constraint on the Z axis, that will stop him from spinning around and rotating. Now we're gonna add another component, that being a polygon collider, that's his bound, so he'll bump into things and Unity will know when he touches something. And we wanna tag him as a player, this will help us to refer to him later in the code. Drag the camera onto the bird in the hierarchy there on the left, and that'll make sure that the camera moves in relation to the bird. Now we're going to add the same collider, this time a box collider, to our pipe, and then to the other pipe. We only need the collider there, no physics necessary. Now I'm making three new scripts in a folder I've created in the assets folder there, C sharp scripts. That's character, pipe up, and pipe down. So basically a script for each of our three sprites we have. Open up the character script first. We're going to make a public rigid body 2D. So that is the uh, the physics attached to our character. Now I'll make a public float. That's a an accessible um, number that we can change. We're going to make several of these. One's going to be the move speed. One will be the flapping height. And we can change that later on, you'll see. We're going to create a public game object for the pipe up and another one for the pipe down. So that means we can access those elements in our script. So first we need to tell uh, Unity where the rigid body is. So RB equals get component, and then that's the rigid body 2D we have attached to our game object there. Okay, and now in the update method, that's a method that's called repeatedly ref as the game refreshes, we're going to add some velocity to our rigid body, the script, the physics script attached to the character. So this is going to keep the character moving constantly to the right, and we're keeping the Y coordinate the same. So by saying RB velocity Y there for the Y coordinate, we're basically saying whatever the Y velocity is, keep it like that. Okay, now we're using an if statement, so that means that the following code will only uh, execute if this statement in the brackets here is true. And we're saying that if the player clicks the mouse button, then we're going to add some movement going upwards. So that's going to be our flapping motion. Now a mouse button is translated as a screen touch anywhere when you save this and run it on Android. Okay, now we're gonna do another if statement and this time we basically want to just detect when our character goes too high or too low. So when they're out of bounds and then we're gonna kill them because we don't want them to be able to fly over or below the pipes. That looks strange and it's cheating. Okay, so now we're gonna create a new method and this one's gonna be called death and that's where we're gonna handle our player death. So yeah, a method is any piece of code enclosed in curly brackets and you can call it from anywhere else within your script. So we're saying public void def. Void means that it's not returning any data, it's just performing a function. And public means that we can access it from other scripts. And we're going to remove all velocity because we want him to be stationary when he respawns. Then we're just going to literally move him by taking the transform there, transform being his current position, and setting it back to zero zero. Now we're going back in here and we're going to add the component, the script, to our player character change these public variables here in the inspector and then there you go. So that's why you make public floats like that so you can change them from outside of the script. Okay now you're going into your pipe up script and I'm creating a reference to our character object and also to our other pipe, our pipe down object. So again we need to tell Unity where to find those so the character is going to look for an object with the character script attached to it. Remember, we just added that component to our character sprite. Then we're going to put another if statement in the update method, which, remember, happens repeatedly every time the game's refreshed. And we're going to say, if the distance between the character and the pipe is bigger than 30, then what we're going to do is we're going to destroy our pipe and we're going to create a new one ahead of us. So basically, when the pipe goes off the left of the screen, because remember, the character keeps moving forwards, we need it to disappear and we need a new pipe, a new challenge to appear in front of us. So now we're creating three 
random variables and these are random numbers and we want that because we want the pipes to be in slightly different positions each time so we're getting a position for the x for the y and for the gap the distance between the two pipes the top and the bottom one we want to make sure that we move the pipe the correct distance in front each time but also add a little bit of a random element just to keep things fresh and to keep things fun now we're going to instantiate meaning create a new version of this game object when you say game object with a small g unity will assume you're referring to this game object that the script is attached to so we're creating this new game object using a vector that's a position and we're making it in front of our character um, 30 uh, spaces in front but at the same time adding on that random element and then we're keeping the height uh, accurate with a slight random element as well then we're going to instantiate the other pipe the pipe down and that's why we added that reference to the pipe down up there at the top and the reason we're doing that in this script rather than in the pipe down's own script is because we've generated these random numbers and this way we can make sure that they stay aligned with each other without having to do some you know do hickory to make sure that the distance stays the same by sharing those random variables just makes more sense to put it here you'll see how it all works in a moment and then we're going to destroy this game object so once we've created the new pipe ahead we need to destroy the old one if you don't do that they're going to keep popping up ahead and it will take up a lot of memory okay now we're creating one more method and this is going to be one of the most useful methods you use a lot in unity it's the on collision enter 2d so that means that when something touches the collider this happens and we're saying when the thing that touches it has the tag player remember we added the player tag to our character then we're going to call that public method from our character script called death so we're saying character death that's the great thing about a public method it means that you can call that bit of code from other scripts attached to other objects so add the component add the script to the pipe up there same way you did before add component scripts there we go click play and now each time you touch that pipe you respawn it kills you great now we need to do the same thing of course for pipe down except we've handled a lot of the code already in pipe up so this is going to be a little bit easier we just need to repeat a few of those same steps we used before so we've created a reference to our character up there and we're going to tell unity where the character is we've done this before find object of type character meaning it's looking for an object with that character script attached okay and then in the void update remember the method that is repeatedly called each time the game refreshes we're saying that if the character is a certain distance away from the pipe again and then we're just going to destroy the game object no need to respawn it because it's being respawned at the exact same time that the the upwards one is being created and then we can just copy that on collision enter script from the other place from the other script and there you go now i'm creating a new folder called prefabs make sure you add that to the pipe down um, sprite by the way a prefab is a ready-made game object with all your attributes and scripts attached so i've deleted them from the scene and just put them into my prefabs folder there now you can see here in the pipe up script in the inspector i have that option to add my public game object and so i'm putting in there the pipe down so that means that the script will know where pipe down is and it'll be able to find it and instantiate it and because it's doing it from the prefab that means that it's going to have all those important attributes attached as you can see it worked there nicely so now i'm just going to add in one more method called build level and this is where we're going to instantiate the first batch of pipes because we need to make sure we've got a good few pipes up there ahead so that they we're not going to have spaces so that they all fill the screen and if you use the same um, numbers that i did in the same sprites then you can just copy this pre uh, pause the screen and copy it out but Play around with where you want your pipes to be. You can add random positions to start with if you want. In the interest of good housekeeping, it would also be a good idea to destroy the pipes every time the player dies. You can add that in later on. But now, when we press play, because that's in the character script, they're all going to be instantiated. Of course, we need to add those public objects from the prefab. It's very important you add from the prefab, not from the scene. Now, when we click play, those ones I've instantiated in my build level script, which is called at the start of the game and also when the character dies, will be right here. So for mine, they're going to be in the same position every time. And then as we go forwards, they're going to start disappearing and reappearing in front of us. And there you go, it works nicely. So that's my Flappy Bird game. 
it's so much fun. I could do this for, for days. You know, I don't want it, don't want it to end really. So yeah, there we go. We've run through that all quite quickly, I realize, but you know, slow it down where you need to. And hopefully you've grasped, grasped the concepts. If there's anything you don't understand, then click the link in the description down below. And I go through in a bit more detail and explain things like prefabs, what they are. They're just a really useful way of creating a game object with all the attributes already attached. And also it means that if you change an attribute on one, it'll change those qualities across every instance of that object throughout your game. So you don't have to make lots of changes. A few people said last time they want to see how you actually create um, an APK, how you make this into a game that you can share. And to do that, you just need to go into build settings. Then you choose Android as your platform. And then you choose switch platform. Then if you click player settings, then it'll open up in the inspector a whole bunch of options where you can say things like um, the package name, the version, the um, Android version you're targeting, etc. And then you just hit build and run and it will build it. 